But anyway, now we got to the main event of the evening. The six-man tag team match, the Bloodline versus the sort of Team WWE, the big three baby faces there, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes. And we've been waiting to see this thing, and it's, it's going to explode, right? Hey, one day down the road, saying it now, what down the road, when Randy Orton turns on Cody, it's going to be big. Oh, and see, that's another one they got. Yeah, we didn't even think of that one earlier. And they can all, and Cody and The Rock. They've got Cody and Rock. Cody They've got Gunther. Cody and Orton. They got Cody and Gunther. They've got, uh, it's, it's it, on and on. Yeah. The matches don't stop until the break of dawn. Anyway, so did you notice some of the announcing, some of the commentary at the start of the six-man tag when the heels made their entrance and came out first and et cetera? Did you hear what they were saying? I heard some of it. You alluded to it earlier in, in our program about the strings they had to pull to get yeah. Jacob Fatu into Canada. That's uh, here. With, Michael Cole said the WWE had to pull strings to get this dangerous man into Canada. And Corey Graves said he has no morality. He's a menace who ought to be locked up. Did I book this? Did I send them announcer notes? This seems familiar. It may be on the YouTube channel. Well, I'm sure they are, but still, it, I'm not... I'm not crowing about this because I was a genius and thought of this. I'm mentioning this because it's fucking obvious. It's wrestling. Again, they're getting the talent over. The announcers are telling a story to get the talent themselves over, not a Mark in his basement telling other Marks that they used to play video games together in fucking Sapporo. And that's it. And then also, did you see what he was announced at, size wise? Six two. Yes, and the weight. I don't remember the weight. Two seventy five. Now the problem is when he was in with Randy Orton. If you really paid too much close attention, which a lot of people don't, then that means Orton was like six six and fucking three ten. But. Remember, I told you, Jacob, he plays bigger than he is. He seems bigger. You can say, I, I've stood next to him. I bet you he's 5'10". But he seems like he's six feet tall. And at the time I was working with him, he probably was two, 280, 290, something like that. But he's slimmed down for this because he needed to to show his athleticism. But that doesn't mean they have to tell the truth. That's what I've been saying all along. They've given this guy this badass entrance at his screen and his debut, and he's laying waste to everybody, and he's allowed to do his shit, and they're talking about his criminal background and how dangerous he is, the, the good parts of doing that to get him over. And they're making him seem bigger physically than he is. That's how you get somebody. And his first WWE match is a main event on pay-per-view. But that's how you get people over, for fuck's sake. So this was not, this was not revolutionary on my part. It just makes sense. That's why so few people do it these days. It's saying, I mean, and from the start, this thing, this was. This was not the Freebirds and the Von Erics in Dallas on the 4th of July. It was not, until the end, an exceptionally exciting six-man tag team match, but you, everything that needed to be done for business was done, and it was back and forth, and it was very professionally executed, but it wasn't the goddamn, you know the greatest match in the history of wrestling, but it didn't need to be because they were there for it and it sold out the building and the people were loving what was going on. They're chanting, we want Roman. They're chanting, fuck you, Solo. Um, I noticed that they pretty much started with Tama Tonga and all the baby faces just kicked the shit out of him. 
because they can't kick the shit out of Solo, he's the heat, and they can't kick the shit out of Jacob because he's the enforcer, so... And apparently, they don't want Tonga Loa in the fucking ring. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that. Ooh. So it looks like Tama Tonga is designated kick the shit out of guy. But then they did simple, th- and Jacob didn't do everything in his repertoire. There's still a bunch more to go, and that's great. But against Randy Orton, Orton gives him that draping DDT and gets up and starts to turn around for the fucking set up for the RKO, and Jacob pops up. It doesn't sell it, and fucking Samoan drops him and super kicks him. That's uh, again, that's all you need all you need to do from a guy Orton's stature, no sell one of his moves and fucking drop him. He didn't have to fucking then take him out and put him through a table. Gets the point across. And uh, Corey Graves had a great line. He's about Jacob Fatu. He said a criminal record was almost a job requirement in ECW, and Paul Heyman is scared of Jacob Fatu. And so, you know, then they they got a lot of heat on Owens. I think maybe too much. The crowd got, I think, a bit testy with seeing so much of it. He fired up to keep them going. But, you know, that that was the thing is that I think besides using too many headbutts, Jacob Fatu was great. They've got they've got Solo positioned as the guy that's got all the heat because he's the usurper of Roman Reigns' reign, to make a little pun there. And uh, Tama is the 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 fall guy in this thing, probably well, Tonga Loa eventually. And they didn't need to do much. They kept it moving. Cody did, uh, you know, all of his shit. And finally, Cody backdropped Jacob Fatu over the rail into the goddamn orchestra pit. But then Solo speared Cody, got a two count, and that's when they wiped out the referee. And Cody hit the crossroads, but there was no referee. So then Owen splashes Solo off the top rope, and (laughs) Orton hits an RKO on Solo, but there's no referee. So Cody clears the desk off and they go to powerbomb him and that's when Jacob saves it. And Owens manages to splash Jacob through the table, which uh, sidelines sidelines him for a minute. Owens goes to pile drive Tama in the middle of the ring and that's where Tonga Loa came from behind to interfere and on a stationary target with an ass as wide as Owens is, he missed his nuts. He hit him, but he didn't hit him. He did the between the legs arm motion, but he didn't actually hit him. And Owens never knew he was there. And he started picking the guy up for the deal and he had to hit him again. And it's like, ah, and then Orton, Came out with two RKOs, but Solo spiked Orton. And Cody hit Solo with two of the crossroadses. But Jacob ran up to the top rope and flipped off and dove or body blocked Cody and hit the implant DDT and held Cody for Solo's spike and then threw the referee in and he counted one, two, three, and Solo beat Cody. But Jacob did all this damage. He saves Solo from Cody, lays Cody out, holds him for the fucking spike, and then rolls the referee back in. So they are obviously highly optimistic about what Jacob's going to be doing, and I don't blame him. Your thoughts on the swing and a miss on the ball? Yeah, how do you fuck that up? Ah. And then I saw, I told you before, I saw... A highlight reel going around. It's on, I think, the uh, Cult of Cornet Facebook group page of just basic things, various basic things in New Japan that were like that. Like, how did he miss that? How did he end up like that? <laughs> like, why did he move like that? It, it, it's, 
you know, it's, you can't blame footwork because he was on his knees. I, mean, yeah, I, don't, sure. <laughs> I don't know knee what work. He, he just, he can't fucking hit the target on his knees. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It was really weird. I've never seen anyone botch a shot to the balls before. And I mean, obviously you're not supposed to hit the, the person, you know, with any degree of force in the balls, but there is a variety of things you can do to let them know that you are there. And he did none of them. It was like the, it, is this why he's the infamous Tonga Loa? It, well, he is now. Because he has all these infamous incidents. <laughs> he, you know, like Jacob Fatu's criminal record. Tonga Loa keeps having infamous botch incidents. That should, they make this, and- should they make this part of his gimmick now? Like, he is the one guy who can't shoot straight on the fucking team. No, if this was AEW, I'm sure they would exploit that to the fullest. But I have a <laughs> feeling he may be wearing a, a suit a lot more often in the future now that there's... yeah. There's other folks that can handle the work in the ring. Maybe that's what pushed him over the edge to get Jacob. They were like, well, shit, you know, we better uh, rethink this anyway. No, uh, I think that, you know what? The fact that he's in the shape he's in tells me this has been a long-term thing. Remember, his name was on the family chart, the family yeah. tree, when The Rock had that press conference before WrestleMania. And he's in great shape. The best shape well, I've I mean, everybody's name was on the chart. There are people who are goddamn... Not even in wrestling, this name was on the chart. So they didn't all get hired. Unless... Or did they? There's something... (laughs) Or did they? (laughs) And then I told the TKO board of directors my sister-in-law would make an excellent marketing rep. But anyway, so that was the excitement. A solo has beaten Cody now. That's NWA champion booking back to the 1950s, 1960s. He's got a pinfall and a tag or six man over the singles champion. That's going to heat that situation up. Cody's got all kinds of challengers for big matches on the horizon. No one kicks out of the spike. No. And, uh, and, and nobody nips up after the Randy Orton DDT, which I was exceptionally pleased that Randy did that for, for Jacob Fatu. It's Road Warrior Hawk in Memphis. Yeah, well, Lawler told him to do it. He said, just pop right back up. He didn't know it was be- going to become a thing around the world. <laughs> that he would never stop that. He would always yeah. not sell a pile driver from that point forward. Lawler is like, I've got this fucking, he's been wrestling for three months. And and he's fucking stronger than a goddamn fucking Ford truck, and I've got to get something out of this, so let's see if I can get something without actually having to have him hit me. But anyway, Ed, Ed, Jacob Fatu comes out a bigger star. There's heat on all kinds of these matches. It didn't hurt the baby faces to lose, on and on and on, except for the attempt to paralyze 12 members of the roster with this ladder foolishness. You know, I thought this was, again, they're not giving them everything, but they don't have to, and they're setting records. But the what they do give them, it, it means something, it makes sense, and their fans are loving it. And it's e- easier to watch than it used to be by a long shot. Maybe for these ladder matches, they could do something different next year, like line ringside with foam, or, you know, those balls, like a ball pit. And then the fun is watching these big guys try to crawl out of it. It's hard to get out of those things. Well, yes, you t- turn it around completely and you say, we're going to make it safer. And now when they fall, they just keep bouncing and rolling and they're t- it's like in quicksand and they're trapped. They're just bouncing all over each other. They can't be hurt, yeah. but they also can't walk. So if a guy's climbing to the top of the ball pit, but a guy's already made it back up to the ring, he can then jump from the ring into the ball pit, do his spot. Both guys are okay. Well, he could jump from the ring into the ball pit and bounce up and get the fucking briefcase instead of having to climb the ladder. So you definitely think trampolines under the ball pit? Well, I think you almost have to, don't you? I don't know, because then you create a situation, too, where once someone hits the ball pit, instead of just sinking, the balls could just start bouncing all over the arena. Well, then give the people baseball bats. Ooh, bat day. And then there you go. So you've got trampolines around the ring with big beach balls all over the top of them 
And then when when the fucking Beach balls. guys, well, the big bouncy balls, the big round ball thing. You, you know, you went in a different direction. This is why me and you have to have our own promotion. Uh, each. What? I was talking a ball pit. A ball pit. Not a with the big beach bouncy balls, balls not, right? No, 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 like the little tiny balls. You have to like you fall into it. And you have to try to climb your way out of it. No, I thought you. I want to see these motherfuckers bouncing around. Well, they the kind of still, balls but... that you—they're just balls everywhere, and you dive <laughs> into it, and it bounces you up. See, I want trampolines, <laughs> and then these bouncy balls, and then these motherfuckers dive off ladders and bounce off these balls everywhere, and and whether the balls bounce into the crowd or the wrestlers bounce into the crowd, you give the fans baseball bats to knock the son of a bitches back. Why don't we make a Jim Cornette night, make it tennis rackets? Well, there you go. And that way they might last a little longer before you wore them out, either the balls or the, the wrestlers. Instead of the bat, the bats might be harder. You probably wouldn't get a lot of wrestlers bouncing back. You know, a human body, once it's drained of blood, doesn't have the, the dribbling capacity. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going exactly. Well, yeah, it won't bounce. Dr. Lecter, kinda, I didn't know where you were going. <laughs> kind of hits with a sick thud rather than bouncing back. So that, you know. All right. Well, we'll see. Do you WWE, think that's something? Uh, I, I think it's something. Something is the word. I mm -hmm. think it's something. Do I think it's something that will come to fruition? You know, the ball pit may be more realistic than this. Baseball bat wielding audience batting well, it, beach it balls like, out of the sky. <laughs> it sounds like with your version of the ball pit, somebody could get hurt.